Kyle, uh, Andy Cuska from the Baltimore Banner. Uh, first, first off, congrats on, uh, I know you have a, a, another son or, or daughter coming, uh, I think pretty soon. So congrats on, hope everything goes well with that. But I uh, wanted to ask, um, just, I know you had interest from other teams, offers from other teams. What was it about the Orioles specifically, maybe about their pitch that, that kind of convinced you that, that Baltimore was where you wanted to be in 2023? Yeah. Um, you know, any, just to start anything that, uh, I get asked here just about team to team. I just want to make sure anything that I say about the Orioles isn't necessarily a knock on other teams, uh, not a knock on the Phillies or anybody. Um, so just, just to clear that up to start. Um, I mean, I, I think for, for me, just talking to, you know, Chris Holt um, and Holmesy and, and Brandon, just about uh, the direction of the team, um, the, the resources that the pitching side has, um, you know, I, I meshed with Chris really well and, and Holmesy really well on a couple of calls we had. Um, and to me, that's, that's pretty important. Um, you know, I want to know the type of conversations I'm going to have. I want to know where they're coming from, what's important to them. Um, and just, you know, those are the guys I'm going to be working with a lot. Um, you know, the seeing from the outside, what Baltimore had last year, um, uh, just the fun they were having the, the second half they had the direction of the team. Um, there was a lot to like. Uh, I was, you know, fortunate this time around in free agency to have, um, you know, a couple teams uh, that were on the winning side of baseball and, and, you know, going for a deep October run. So that made it enticing um, and not an easy decision. But, um, you know, when it comes to how this team's built uh, with the, the good young players, uh, how they play defense, how just just the whole package, um, you know, I felt like this was a, a really good opportunity for my family and I. Rock Kubako. Hey, Kyle, how important was it for you to get a deal done before the winter meetings? Um, I don't think that was uh, much importance, really. Um, you know, we had quite a few talks with with our agent, Randy, and, um, you know, we made it clear to the teams who had called, you know, early on, like, you know, this was probably, a, I don't know, maybe going on for for at least two weeks. So, you know, two going into three weeks. And you know, we were letting them know, like, we're not in any hurry. You know, this isn't something that we need to get done before the winter meetings. But also, if we felt like we were in a situation where, um, you know, it was pretty clear what the market was for me, um, we had a, a location that we wanted to be, uh, and we had a situation that was a fit, and we didn't see a need to wait till after the winter meetings. Um, if it didn't happen till after the winter meetings, that was fine. Um, but similar to last time, you know, three years ago, uh, we felt like we had a, a pretty good spot. We had, you know, an, an offer that we thought was more than fair and uh, a situation that was going to be really good for my family. So um, we thought the time was right. And and the tricky part about, you know, some of this is you just never know when, you know, teams need to pivot and go to other players. You know, they can't wait on, on any given player for, you know, as long as that player wants. So uh, in this situation, we thought Baltimore was a great fit. And, you know, we wanted to make sure that, uh, we didn't take a chance, you know, a week later, and and then that fit wasn't a, uh, wasn't a possibility. Nathan Ruiz, Baltimore Sun. Hey, Kyle. When we spoke with Mike Elias about you, he mentioned that you experienced some bad luck last year. I guess, how do you kind of evaluate that? And, and along those lines, how do you feel like the Orioles can make you better next year? Yeah, um, you know, I think at the end of the season, um, you know, periodically through the year, you you know, probably take inventory of quote luck or, you know, unfortunate instances. Um, you know, and I don't think any of that is necessarily, I don't want it to sound like an indictment on any teammates, obviously. Um, but I mean, I think, you know, when, when I look back and you see, okay, there's certain starts here, certain starts there that, you know, one or two plays makes a big difference. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think, Bad luck is a part of baseball, right? Whether it's a 65 mile hour looping line drive that drops in or a wind aided homer, all those things happen. Uh, and some of them are your fault. Some of them are not your fault. Um, but I mean, I think uh, that's just one thing about baseball that makes it, and I guess sports, it's not just baseball, but it makes sports pretty, pretty unique. Um, but I mean, I think there are things about Baltimore that, that give me a chance to, to take a step forward. You know, I, I think the approach, uh, I love Caleb and Kaplan uh, and Lundy there with Philly, the pitching staff that they had and, and the, the coaching staff they had helped me out a lot. Um, you know, I think there's, there's uh, obviously a draw to, you know, Chris and, and Holmesy and what they've done with some pitchers 
you know, similar to myself with just a little different approach and being able to work on things. Um, and I think, you know, there, there's a, a defensive setup here. You have a gold glove third baseman and a gold glove finalist at shortstop. Uh, and, you know, that's obviously appealing uh, when I'm facing right-handed hitters, hopefully throwing a lot of sinkers in and getting a couple of two hoppers that way. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, all of those things hopefully, uh, you know, mixed in with a deeper left field wall, um, you know, hopefully that allows me to, to take advantage of some of those things. Nick Real, MLB.com. Hey, Kyle, the Orioles have a lot of young pitchers on their staff. How much are you looking forward to working with those guys and maybe just sharing some of your knowledge and experience that you have from throughout your career? Yeah, um, you know, I, I looked at the, the roster the other day. I think I'm the only person born before 1992 uh, and maybe the only person uh, with more than five or six years of service time. So uh, it's, it's, it's an opportunity that um, – you know, I don't necessarily hunt out the opportunities or pick a spot just so that you can go work with people, right? Like, you know, my job is to go get out. So my job is to, to be the best pitcher I can be. Um, but I was really fortunate as a young guy uh, to have a guy like Mike Pelfrey, Kevin Correa, Phil Hughes, and I could just keep naming starters that, that took me under their wing and, and helped me with direction on and off the field. Um, so I, I think it's, it's something that, you know, if, when, when the opportunity arises, because I'm sure, well, when the opportunity arises, I look forward to, to hopefully helping guys in any way I can. Um, I love watching bullpens. I love watching guys throw and just soaking up information, um, you know, kind of digging into people's brains and how, and how they're trying to get better and what they're trying to accomplish in the bullpen today um, and just watching. You know, I think that's how you can really absorb information and learn a lot about guys. So, um, you know, I, I look forward to those opportunities and, um, you know, whatever, whatever questions come my way, whatever capacity I'm needed, I'm excited to do it. Rich Dubroff, BaltimoreBaseball.com. Hey, uh, Kyle, first of all, uh, you and I have a lot in common. I'm one of the few writers who was born before 1992. So, <laughs> uh, uh, so any, anyway, uh, going back to Jake, going back to Jake's question, Jordan Lyles, who you uh, pitched with in, in Texas, was was mentioned by a lot of the pitchers as somebody who who made an impact and how they felt that they couldn't have done as well as they had. Don't you think that 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 your sort of mentoring is, is needed rather than you know that it's almost mandatory rather than uh, voluntary? Yeah, Jordo, uh, he was one of the calls I made. You know, when I had heard from Baltimore and, and after the first conversation I had um, with, with the front office, because, um, he's somebody that I got to know pretty well there in Texas. Uh, I value his opinion. I value his friendship. Um, and he only had glowing things to say, uh, about Baltimore. Um, and that was one, one of the reasons why I think I felt so comfortable making the decision, but, um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, just hearing, you know, how he talked about the approach of, of why he thought he got better. Uh, to me was very interesting um, and without going into it, cause I don't want to speak for him too much, but um, you know, that was, that was appealing. That was, that was really cool to hear him, you know, give credit where he thought credit was due. Um, you know, talk about the makeup of the team, you know, talk about even things like pitching to Rutschman, uh, you know, just, just the things that stood out to him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I look forward to hopefully being an extension of Jordo cause I feel like we're, we're fairly similar when it comes to, um, you know, how we approach people. Um, you know, I might, I, I don't say I, I might, I definitely talk more than he does. So hopefully the guys don't get too uh, bugged by that because uh, you got to pull some words out of Jordan every now and then, but um, you know, his glowing review of Baltimore and, and the staff and the people um, definitely resounded with me. Steve Molesky, Mass and Sport. Kyle, it looked like late in the year, the K rate really spiked up for you, even if results were a little mixed at times. Uh, did you find something there you liked with swing and miss, something that could carry into next year? Yeah, so uh, probably sometime in August, I found a little bit of just a feeling in my delivery uh, that I feel like was the lead to the, the velocity uptick in the month of September. Um, you know, when we have more time, if anybody wants to sit down and get to uh, – you know, kinetically analytical, I can, I, believe me, I, I dig that stuff. I love it. But um, I think that helped out a lot. You know, there's no, there's no question that velocity helps pitchers. Uh, so anytime, if I can go from averaging 92 to averaging 93, I think it's a big deal. 
Um, so I'm not out there hunting for velocity. I'm trying to hunt and make myself the best version of myself that I can be. So I believe that, you know, getting that extra velocity in the month of September helped out a lot. Um, I also uh, did something that early in the year, I probably would have told you that was crazy, but I tweaked my slider and turned it into a pitch that moved more horizontally to the left and actually went down less. Uh, so, you know, you guys have probably heard the term a sweeper slider. Um, I was throwing a bullpen before my start uh, late September against the Braves. And Caleb, the pitch coach, came up and said, hey, what do you think about messing with your slider today? Once again, that's been my best pitch my whole career. So it was a little interesting conversation. Um, but I said, yeah, let's try it. And four days later or three days later, I'm throwing it in the game. And, uh, you know, I probably got more swing and miss on sliders, um, even more so than I normally did, than, than I probably had in a while. And um, so I, I think those two things to me, uh, along with using my pitches better, I think, in the month of September at times, probably led to the uptick in Ks. And um, I've never been someone that's gone and hunted for strikeouts. To me, that always gets my pitch count up and, and I end up throwing more balls. Um, so I, I enjoy hunting contact early, but I do think, you know, in today's game and especially with the slider, I think I need to do a better job of hunting for some swing and miss at times. So, um, you know, I think that weapon will, will go a long way in allowing me to do that. Andy Costco, the Baltimore banner. Yeah. Kind of jumping off what you did with the slider there. Is there, I don't know, in your, in the decades since you've been a professional baseball player, I mean, how have you seen your pitch approach or approach, you know, to, to going after guys kind of change or, or have you tweak things? And, and how, I mean, is that like kind of a constant thing for you when you look at, you know, from year to year kind of changing approach to certain guys? Yeah, I think it is a constant thing for me, for sure. Um, you know, having five or six pitches that, you know, I use, uh, try to use quite a bit. Um, you know, I don't necessarily have, you know, I'm sure, you know, my sinker and slider are probably my most consistent pitches, you know, usage wise, because for the most part, they, they're never gone, right? For the most part, they're there every start. Um, but it, I mean, yeah, whether it's adding a cutter in 21 to try to be more effective against lefties, um, you know, using my curveball more, um, gosh, I can't remember what year I started doing that, probably 17 or 18, just to add a weapon. Um, you know, going into 2016, I think it was throwing righties to change up more, right? Throwing change up to righties more. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm always looking for things that that can make me better. You know, I don't have the 96 to 99 fastball that you can just throw whenever. Um, I think my slider is a pitch that I can throw a lot. But whenever I throw my slider 40 percent or more in a game, I have mixed results. So I don't necessarily have this pitch that I just go and throw um, and, and get outs all the time. So. For me, you know, digging into usage, digging into locations, digging into effectiveness of each pitch, once again, I might be boring you guys, uh, is something that I enjoy doing. So um, I think it's, it's something that I need to do personally to be the best version of myself. Um, so that's what I enjoy doing, and that's what I try to do. Nathan Ruiz, Baltimore Sun. Uh, you mentioned the left field wall. You mentioned working with Adley. How big of factors were those two things in your decision and how big of a part of the Orioles pitch were they? Um, I think both of them were definitely a part of the pitch. Um, you know, the more I heard about Adley, obviously the, the, the more great things I heard. Uh, the other guy I talked to was Robinson Trinos, a good friend from Texas and man, uh, another guy that only had good things to say about that group. So um the wall, obviously, I, I have always enjoyed playing in Baltimore. Um, you know, it's one of my favorite road parks. Uh, I think it's a sneaky city to go to. Uh, I love, you know, restaurants in Little Italy. I mean, it's just there's a lot to, lot to love about Baltimore. Um, and, you know, we opened up there with Minnesota in 2014. Um, one of the more fun starts I've had. Um, you know, I mean, it's so playing against that team, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16, when they were really stinking good. And, uh, you know, that stadium was just electric to play in. So a lot of cool memories for me, uh, you know, playing there. And so, you know, that has something to do with it. So who knows what I'm going to think of the stadium. You know, I've seen it on TV. Obviously, I enjoy seeing the short wall uh, sitting in the dugout as a, a player, uh, not as much as a pitcher. Um, but, you know, it it's something that everybody gets used to. So I've heard, you know, people aesthetically say what they want, but, um, you know, as a pitcher, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I think when you see how many less home runs you would give up, if you pitched all your games in Baltimore, that's a pretty good feeling. 